All right, I'm mounting a new part in the chuck here. So I put the part in here with, uh, um, let me rotate, with this uh, particular feature sticking, it's going to stick up vertical because this is going to be my zero point for my C axis. And I thought it might be uh, useful to show how I indicate this part in here on the machine. First, I'm going to mount the dial indicator in the um, spindle. I have this, this, uh, this tool holder here that I just permanently keep my dial indicator in. And I just mount it in here. I, I could use a magnetic uh, base on the face here and do it that way too, but this allows me to, to also indicate some things in in relation to the, uh, the spindle um, center line. So let me get this sort of situated here. And what I want to do, let's set this kind of at an angle like this. Maybe like, maybe like this here. So you guys can see it easier, maybe. Let's see, let's see how this works. First, I want to make sure I've, I've chucked onto this um, part, but I think I'm going to change something here. Hold on a second. I need some clearance on uh, the way this mounts on the chuck jaws here. So I want to get as close up to the, to the jaws as possible. That should be better. Now, see that thing was in the way it might hit on the jaws here. So, and I'm just, um, normally I don't position the indicator exactly like this because I can see it looking at it a different way, but for the purpose of the video, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna angle it a little bit so that I can get as close as possible to the front of the jaws here. Let me move the camera in a little closer so you can kind of maybe see what's happening here. Got to keep it out far enough so I can, so you can see what I'm doing over here too. So I'm going to just establish a, some kind of a zero point here by jogging the x-axis. And now I have the c-axis coupled, so I'm going to jog the c-axis to rotate the, the chuck. And there's holes, there's set true, this is a set true uh, three jaw chuck on, on this um, arbor thing that I made to go into the bigger four jaw chuck back here. And uh, well, let me, let me explain this first. Um, I get a lot of questions about this. Why I put a three jaw, a smaller three jaw chuck in this bigger four jaw chuck like this. And the reason is, if, if you look at the spindle here, the spindle is, is about 12 inches wide here. And when you're close up to the, um, if your part is way back here in the chuck, there's two problems with this kind of a machine that you end up running into. Is if you got this bigger chuck, and this isn't even the biggest chuck, this machine came with, this is a 16 inch four jaw chuck, manual four jaw chuck which is actually about 16 and a half inches in diameter. Um, but this machine came with a, um, a 21 inch, I believe it is, Kitagawa chuck, hydraulic chuck, which is even bigger than this chuck. And when you're up close to the, um, if you had this part in this chuck, for instance, you would be working vertically. If you do any vertical work on smaller parts like this, you have to you have to have long tool holders because this this spindle here is so big in diameter that when it's up here you're hitting the chuck with either turning tools or, or um, milling tools or things like that and so in order to get clearance on smaller parts I've extended this chuck this smaller chuck out here to, uh, to give me clearance so that I don't have to have such long tool holders in the spindle here and, and the related uh, problems with longer holders as far as vibration and chatter and things like that. So 
that's the reason that I mount this smaller chuck in the bigger chuck and, and I have this kind of a, well let me get the, over here, and I have this kind of a dovetail connection on here which is very strong. This is, this doesn't move or go anywhere when you're machining so it's very strong connection like that. I've discussed that, sorry for the shakiness here, I'm moving the camera. I've discussed that in previous videos on this dovetail connection on my channel. So anyway back to what we were doing here So, like what I was saying before, this is a set true chuck and I got to get to these um, adjustment screws, you know, with an Allen wrench like this. And what I want to do is um, get the part running as true as possible, as close to the jaws here as possible. Now out here it's not going to be running true, even though these I bored these jaws and everything. and. Um, you would think, you know, you just chuck onto it and it's going to be running true, but it, it things don't work that way. And also, I don't know if you can see it, but this part is slightly smaller in diameter up to this up to this point right here. And then it, it this is the only area being chucked in the chuck jaws from here to here. And so it's not really a lot of length being chucked in these uh, rather tall jaws. And, um, you know, this kind of a smallish chuck to hold on to this. So this will, if this is running true here, it doesn't mean that this is running true out here, so we have to work back and forth a little bit here. So what I'm going to do, what I do with these screws on the, on the, the set true chucks is I just, I just use it to move the part. You don't want to excessively tighten these screws because it distorts the back of the chuck, which distorts the front of the chuck, and it moves the part in the, in the chuck jaws. So all you want to do with those screws is, is um, try to rotate the screw, or, or tighten the screw, I should say, and uh, move the part. i got to decide where my actual zero is here while I'm talking here. You want to move the part, but then you want to kind of move it and then back the screw off. And you want these screws to be snug, of course, so the chuck doesn't move when you're machining, but you don't want them uh, super tight because then it distorts the the actual chuck itself. I moved the part in X to reestablish some kind of a zero here where I think it might be. I'm going to rotate 180 degrees. Th these these screws on these uh, on this chuck are are roughly 180 degrees apart. I'm going to see if I can establish my actual zero point on my indicator here. And I'm moving it with the bottom screw and I kind of back it off, snug it back up. I'm going to readjust my zero point here in X, go back. That looks pretty good there. Trying to adjust these a little bit here. Let's say I, I don't like to keep these things real super tight. I'm gonna, all right. Now, that's pretty good for right now. It's within less than a half a thousand. And what I'm gonna do is go out here on the end of this part, and it's gonna be running out out here I guarantee we move the in, the camera here I'm gonna get me a new zero point okay maybe maybe you can see that better I don't know now I'm gonna rotate this in, in the C axis you see it's running out like, wow, see like, that's pushing upward against the indicator there. So let me, uh, let me tap on this a little bit here. Get a piece of aluminum, because I'm so close to the, I can't really hit on this with the hammer here, because I'll hit the dial indicator. And I'm going to 
Move that roughly about half of the distance. Re-zero the x-axis. Come back, rotate. And that's, that's running, that's not bad there. I might even let that go like that, but now we have to kind of go back and forth here because it's going to uh, get the chuck job here so I know where I'm at. Oop, wrong axis. Let me bring this back to zero. That may may have caused this to run out now a little bit here. See, so we got to kind of go back and forth here. And adjust these screws a little bit. Go 108. Oop. Happen here. Must be some dirt on the part there or something. Let's see how this goes here. It's like uh, you have to continually go back and forth a little bit. I know ideally it would be nice if the Chuck just chucked on a part. But it doesn't work that way. In fact, I'm going to make sure the part's all the way back in the jaw time. Yeah, moved it a little bit too far there. See, what people have a tendency to do is adjust these screws on these chucks, and they, they tighten up one real tight, you know, thinking, oh, they're just going to move the chuck that way, and then they leave it tight. I think... Uh, Actually, Robin Renzetti on his um, channel, YouTube channel, had a pretty good demonstration of this, how it distorts the chuck with these screws. How you don't want them too tight anyway okay it's within a half a thousand or less we're gonna go up here and check this again it's gonna not be true again and you just kind of got to go back and forth with this see now it's, it's running out three thousandths out here I don't know if you can tell from the video, but this part is not really held all that real strongly in this chuck. So I have to take that into account when I program my uh, <clears throat> when I program my tool path and stuff. It's kind of a hassle. I'm trying to stay out of the light too here. So you can uh, see what's happening. It's running out about a thousandth of an inch here. So let's get this right here. See if I can get that last half a thousandth.
without messing things up here. Oop. Might have been a little bit too much. All right. That looks pretty good there. I mean, I'm not going to worry about half a thousandth, really. Let's see how good it's running up here again. Probably going to be running out a little bit again. As soon as I tapped on it. See, this is what you got to go through. To, if this is running within a half a thousandth, I'm not going to mess with it. It's a little bit more than that. To, uh, there's a point, you know, where you can sit here and tweak this forever. And at some point you have to say, what's good enough? You know, as, as machinists, we like to be, have everything running perfect, but... and a half so we're going to go let's see if I can tap that one more time here Not right there maybe still about a half a thousand there Which is not bad. And up here, how are we doing now? All right. So at this point, I'm going to kind of let that go. You have to, like I say, you have to stop at some point. Now we're going to uh, we're going to indicate our X and Y zero. So I'm going to run the B axis to zero here. I'm rotating it. I'm going to physically jog the machine down to X, Y, zero. Looking at the display here on the control. I like the Mazak because it actually shows the location of the spindle when you're doing things like this. On, a, on some controls, you have to call some kind of an offset or something and actually physically a, in MDI move the machine to a, a zero point. But on the Mazak, it shows it on the display here. It shows a tool location at all times on the display. I'm going to unclamp the spindle so I can rotate the spindle. I'm going to bring this up to uh, my part. All right, I got the camera moved maybe to where you can see this. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get some kind of an indication on my indicator here. I try to keep this distance as short as possible where my indicator is because in the horizontal position, gravity affects your reading. And so I've tested this, this little arm and this particular interrapid indicator and it's pretty good in the horizontal position as long as I keep it up short. This, this distance here is probably, oh, maybe about three inches. I don't really want to stick this out any further than necessary to indicate this. I'm going to rotate around. Now between hot and cold temperatures, this machine sometimes changes a little bit in X and Y. I gotta get it to where it's zeroed out here. 
I want to do this before I indicate the, the C-axis rotation to make sure I'm on center and then I'm going to rotate the C-axis to get this key on center because that's the alignment is necessary to machine the part in this operation. So first I got to do this and that's pr looking pretty good there now. And then let me, uh, let me see if I can do this. I'm going to show you on the control. See right now we're sitting about a thousandth off center. I don't know if you can see that. So what I got to do is go to the work offset, run my cursor down here, go teach, zero. I'm doing zero over here, input, and teach, zero over there, input. Okay. You might notice this machine is a, I don't know if you can see that because there's a reflection here. Let's see. Maybe I can turn this. But this machine is not quite on center line in the y-axis. It's always been that way. Now there's a parameter in the control you can adjust for that and it would be centered, but I never have done that because I, it's not a, a real problem for me, but if you're running uh, maze troll programs, this would, this would be an issue. So now we go back and if I hit reset, we're on zeros here in X and Y. Now, I'm going to put the camera back over here and see if we can see this. I might have to move it again, but I'm going to uh, move the machine back in Z and then up in X. And I'm going to index my uh, B axis down to 90 degrees. I'm going to come over here to indicate this key in without moving my machine in the y-axis. It's important not to move the machine in the y-axis at this point because I want that key to be right on the um, on C zero aligned with the y zero, if, if you will. So let me see how to do this. Let me move the camera up here. I'll stick it on the spindle so we can maybe see better. I don't know if this is good enough and if you can see all right here. I'm going to stick a level on here and it's going to kind of be cocked, but it'll still give me a sort of a closer indication of my, because I know the, the top of this flat on this key is, um, horizontal, if you will, or level with the y-axis. And I'm just going to level that crudely like that. That gets me sort of in the ballpark here, if you will. And then I'm going to bring my uh, dial indicator up here on the spindle. And we have to uh, set a zero point here of some sort swinging around this key. Now, I want to keep this distance as short as possible again, although it's not quite as critical in the vertical direction as it was in the horizontal, but and I want to test my spot I've chose here. See, it's not in the right place. See, you can't get any kind of null reading on the indicator because the indicator is uh, way off in the wrong place. Now, the way that you can kind of guesstimate the right place is you can move this back and forth and you can see where the indicator kind of wants to touch the part. It's going to be somewhere over this direction, halfway in between those two points. And you can kind of reposition the indicator so you can get a, a decent null reading on the indicator. But even still, it's kind of at an angle. I don't like my indicator to set that much of an angle if I can help it. See, now that's better. See how the indicator is square? The, the, the travel or of the stylus of the indicator goes back and forth like this is square to the part. That's kind of better for getting a true indication. 
I'm going to I'm going to actually go more into the travel of the indicator than that because I want to uh, move it to the other side, and if it's not touching, it's, it doesn't give me a good indication. Well, you'll see what I mean in a second. I'm going to set a zero at the null position of that indicator. I'm going to jog up in X, not changing anything, and rotate the spindle. Maybe you can see a little better like that. You kind of got to go back and forth. See, we're within very close now. This C-axis will actually jog in, in a, I'm not jogging it that fine, but it'll jog in one ten thousandths of a degree, which is um, ten times finer resolution than normal. Rotary axis is jogging a thousandths of a degree. This particular machine will jog this C-axis in a tenth of a thousandth of a degree. But, I, but you don't really need to jog it that's fine for this, because the tolerance isn't that close on the drawing. Okay, now I got my zero point, you know, on both sides of this key. See there, that's zero. Half a revolution into the indicator got to make sure that's true because sometimes you can get confused and that's zero right there now what we got to do is set our C zero so let me see if I can do this uh, pull my in my okay so I'm trying to get where I don't have as much reflection here this is the part over here so our C is not at zero, so we got to go back to the work offset. We're going to run our cursor down to the C axis, and we're going to say teach zero, the zero over here, and enter. I'll push the enter key, and um, you probably couldn't see that, but it changed it a little bit. And I go back here, and my C is at zero here. So now that is the indicating of the part. Now I'm going to have to um, put the Heimer probe in here and set the zero on the Heimer probe. Let me see. I gotta clamp the camera down because I can't do this with one hand. Now I could use a, the spindle probe for this, I guess. I do have a spindle probe for this machine, but it just takes a lot more time to mess with that. I just do it with this hammer thing. So now I gotta orient the spindle, clamp the spindle, take this out. This in. And we're going to come up here and set our C, I mean our Z, zero point. So somewhere down here on the part, we're going to uh, come up against the indicator. Now, when you set your um, jog to fine on your on your uh, hand wheel here, always jog away from the indicator first because if you start spinning this thing real fast in a slow jog rate and you didn't push the right button on your control, you're going to cram that indicator right into the part if you're at a fast jog rate and you spin that jog wheel too fast. So always jog away from the indicator first just to make sure you're in the slow jog rate. So now we've got on zero and here again, let's see if we can go over the control and uh, I take it off of this mode and we go to work offset. Oh, we're a tenth of a thousandth different. Not really worth worrying about too much, but we're going to go down here and we're going to teach zero input. Go over here, hit reset, and we're at Z zero. So that's, that's basically how to do it, how to set a part up in here. 
kind of involved with this particular setup because uh, because of these chuck jaws here are, are, are only holding on to a short length of this part actually and it's and they're long jaws in a in a little chuck here and it's kind of a little bit flimsy and in fact I, I when I programmed this as I said earlier I had to make sure I, would, I didn't uh, do any excessive feed rates or anything like that in these in these uh, features that I'm machining in here because it, it will move the part in these jaws and you don't want that to happen so you got to take that into account sometimes when you're programming So that's indicating a part, at least this part, in the chuck and making sure you got it running true enough for the tolerances you're dealing with. And then you could, we can start the program. <laughs> 